Hi everyone, it's Jane Orvian and we're about to place a splint on a lovely Swedish friend. I have my able assistant in the corner, so a little bit overstating your part completely. A little bit about using your assistant. So particularly if you've got splint, um, you're going to be in told there's a long bone fracture, mid shaft, so you know that you need to support top and bottom. Don't assume that your assistant will know what to do although they are there to help you kind of assume, kind of like you do with the examiner, that they have no knowledge whatsoever. So if I say to my assistant, please, can you help me hold the leg? Your assistant may say, how would you like me to hold? And that's absolutely fine, because then I can say, I would like you to support the elbow and the joint below, because there's a fracture here. Okay. And that sets us up nicely, because you are going to be much faster at bandaging if you have assistant. I have padding for toes, one, two, three, and thank you, kind assistant. I'm gonna, sorry this is an odd angle, it's not my best bandaging because I'm doing it for the camera. Thank you assistant, you are waiting to take the leg back, which is very nice. And again, up the leg, thank you, if you could just take that end, thank you, because then Although I'm supporting the leg, I don't need to do all of the work. And you can see that is a half to two thirds, in fact, a little bit more. And that is how quick you can bandage that leg. And there's a reasonable tension on there. But as I said in the previous video, this is the bad boy that does your tension. So I'm going to place the splint now, which you're going to have to help hold. So it's going to go here. If You can just let me see the paw. Thank you. And if you can hold that in, and again, I'm going to go toe and round. Thank you, assistant. And this is where I really need to start thinking about, oops, a bit of soft line coming out there. Really need to start thinking about my tension because we're fighting two battles here. Thank you, assistant. Because we're fighting the one battle, which is just, we need to conform. But the second battle is, the soft band is really slippery and then so is the back of the splint so if you think of it now you've got that back which is really quite slidey so you do really need to think about your tension quite carefully on this one so again I'm at the top of the leg oops and if I want to I can either tuck this in or if you can... thank you assistant can help and again I've got the sheep. So with the ones with the pictures on, don't get confused because when you start, it will always be the odd part of the picture, the back part that is there. And again, I just want to make sure that I am unraveling so that I am making it clear. It is a little bit difficult to do here. I'm holding it at the back so I'm not yanking against the dog's leg, I'm doing it against my finger so there's no discomfort there. And again, you can probably see it, sorry, I'm going to pick Swedish Friend up in a really unprofessional way, but just so that you can see the difference between two layers and one layer. So you want all your bandage to look that colour. You don't want to see the white coming through in the back at all because then that's one layer and you haven't achieved your half to two thirds overlap. Sorry, Swedish friend. Back to the table we go. Assistant, thank you for your continued assistance. Thank you, Swedish friend. I'm sorry for the, oops, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm taking a really bad bandage here. You will all do far better than I do. And then final and tension check. Do you know what? It's not bad. And that was a fairly quick bandage and doing it at an odd angle. That's good. And that's how tight you need to go. Remember, as I said, practice on a stuffed toy because you're going to get much different. You're going to get much different tension than you would on a real patient. So remember that. So that is a quick guide to doing a splint. Thanks for watching.